Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode on the seven day today absolute beginner's guide and we have spawned onto our new map that we've generated from the previous episode now before you start bear in mind that as a new spawned in player you have a zone around you until you are level five that zone stops zombies spawning in it now that zone does not move with you the zone is basically loved where you are and left there so if you start wandering around too much you're going to leave the zone and zombies are going to come to you now that doesn't stop zombies also randomly wandering to you it just basically reduces the chance that you're going to see a zombie before you're level five to give you a chance to get your head around things before we started it also gives us a chance to have a look at our quest that we're going to have at the start and basically get ourselves something safe to work from uh, because obviously if we start wandering around everywhere we're going to have no weapons we're going to have no way of defending ourselves nowhere to store anything just nothing we can do so let's get into the game and let's get started so i paused it so it literally just started so he's got off off the ground that's the only thing that's happened so let's remove our pause now bear in mind if you're playing multiplayer it will not pause it will continue playing in single player you get the advantage of pausing okay so this is the start of the quest this quest is designed to teach you the basics of the game what it doesn't do is it doesn't tell you to actually be able to do things it tells you what you should do to teach you the very basics but it doesn't tell you how to do them so today that's what we're going to be looking at before we've even started let's pick up on a few things the first thing is we have this little thing here that tells us that we are comfortable in our environment now it'll it's not quite that but basically that's what it means we'll have a look at what it actually means when we have a look at our character menu this here is our stamina the blue bar 100 out of 100 you don't go over that but you can start reducing it down they've changed it slightly now so you don't actually have this little they used to get a block appearing quite quickly when you started running out of food and water it's not as bad anymore but if you allow yourself to start starving and having no water this will regen slowly and we'll start to drop down so you haven't got a, a, a full maximum amount obviously that increases as you start getting food bottom one is obviously your health little health symbol then again there if you start to take damage you will take max damage and you will also take damage the max damage means it reduces the maximum amount of what you can have i call it max damage everybody has a name for it and obviously you lose health just as normal Onto here, this is your tool belt. You'll notice the tool belt if you haven't played on Alpha 19.2. It is 10 long now instead of 8. It used to be 8, it's now 10. So you've got two extra blocks. Above that is an empty bar. That is your XP bar. You then have your food and your water bars. As you can see, we're not actually paused right now, so we're going to start reducing... Our food and water already so you'll start seeing these drop down as you do more things uh like your stamina the more your stamina has to regen the more food and water it uses same with doing tasks and stuff like that you've obviously had a chance to read that now instead of listening to me so you'll notice it just basically says hello welcome good luck blah 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 um we don't know whether they're going to do something with this later down the line but there isn't anything to do with it. It just basically starts the quests. Uh, I've not seen Noah. Let's continue. Okay, basic survival is your active quest. The quest status is displayed on the objective tracker on the top right of your screen. For more information on quests, access your inventory and navigate to the quest menu. That's here. This is the quest here. That's what you got to do, and that's what tasks you know what set uh, what specific task you've got to complete it it also gives you a note from the duke of navisgan well we're not playing on navisgan so that's why we can't see him okay so we've got a quest now this is our day and time as it states this is also our compass which also has our quest tracker on it as well at the moment there's no specific location so there'll be nothing on our compass to tell us where the quest is Okay, so it says craft a bedroll. What it doesn't tell you is how you gather plant fibers. So I'm going to show you. Punch the ground. Left mouse button. As you would expect, WAS and D is your controls for moving around. 
what I tend to do is just gather myself a little bit of resources. Just get me going. Nope. Nope. So, just punching the grass gives you plant fibers. Okay, so if you press your tab button, you get your crafting menu. Now, you will notice something here. Now, because we placed cheat mode on, so we can show the creative menu, you now have a specific extra option here. If you didn't click on the cheat menu, that will not be here. This allows us options for creative. We're not going to use this at the beginning of this guide at all. We're going to keep this off. Everything we do will be done on our normal crafting menu. We'll come to the creative side of things later down the line. If you'd like to know something specific, please let me know. I can either do a, a separate video, which will tie in during your creative stuff. But right now, the plan is to show you later down the line. Okay, so it says craft a bedroll and place the bedroll. The bedroll is now highlighted with this little marker telling us what it is we're actually crafting. Left click it, click craft. That was a good one. Tells you how many plant fibers you need, tells you what you need, which is plant fibers, and gives you a picture of it. Easy said, easy done. Gives you a description if you really want to. You can favorite it if you want to, or you could just increase how many you want to build, etc. etc. Nice and easy. Here we go. Okay, so it's now crafted it and placed it in our internal inventory. Now, if you've already crafted something like this before and placed it on your bar, the likelihood is, is it will drop onto the bar. Sometimes it doesn't. But nine times out of ten it does. We're going to drag it over to our toolbar and place it in there. Now since we had nothing in our slot number one and our hands just outstretched, but you can see it's got a white square around it, it's a safe bet that it's going to give us a location where to place it down. So let's press the escape key to close it and there you go. It now shows it. If this was a tool, you would now have the tool in your hand. As you can see, this is floating. I think it will place it no, it won't because it's actually dropping down. Just bear that in mind. Sometimes the ground isn't quite level. And if you place it like that, it will break it. Sometimes. Sometimes it will actually put it on and it's just, it looks messy. Right. You'll also see there's little markers around here. You can see them there, the red one that's showing now. And then it goes to white. That is your dead zone. Or the... Uh, I don't want to bury it. I want to show it. So that's the dead zone for your sleeping bag. You can rotate it by pressing your left mouse button. You can also have it reverse rotate by pressing the R. If there was other options, you could keep hold of R and it would like you, but this doesn't. There is no other options. It is just a single drop item. Right click, places it down, and now places a little bed marker on the ground, the new addition, and on your compass as well. So you can see it in both directions. Now we know where we've started, we can come back to here whenever we need to. There's no physical sleeping in this game. You go through the night being awake, so we don't need to worry about that. The next thing we have to do is craft a stone axe. Now, the stone axe, we already have plant fiber for. We just need wood and we need some small stones. The easiest way of doing it is if you wander around, you will actually find both of them on the ground. So... Let me see if I can spot one. There's a small stone there. Two small stones. Wood, you've got two options. There is small wooden things on the ground, you'll see. I'm not seeing anything nearby. There's one possibly here. There isn't. We'll talk about burst nest, so I'll leave that for now. But all you can best do in really is just punch in a tree. There's one wood. In this instance, just get the wood that you need. Don't keep punching it forever because you're actually not getting as much as what you can do by crafting it. Tab button again to bring it up. You can now see that we've got another option here. We're going to craft that. Take a couple of seconds. Then going to drag it into our number one slot. You can see our food and water has gone down and we've now got a axe. The next thing we've got to do is create clothing. But create craft plant fiber pants and plant fiber shirt so we need the plant fiber for that so i'm just going to top up the plant fiber just make an audible sound when you've completed what you needed to do now because i already had it it's not telling me to get any more but i just like to keep up on top of it again marks it out for us as you can see the stone axe has dropped off because we don't have the resources for it these also won't show here normally 
this is the basics so in here would be everything else except the quest items that we got here if you have a quest item that you need to make it will show in your basics like these craft craft them go and we get the second one done and now it's telling us that we need to worry now before we go to worrying it i want to go to my character screen you see here it says elemental protection if you click on it it will tell you what it's doing you're temporarily protected from heat and cold there is no xp penalty on death this protection will decrease and disappear at level six so think ahead you know where i said you were comfortable but that is exactly what it means you are comfortable we can now go ahead and we press shift and click we'll wear them if you're not in it if you're in the crafting if you shift and click it puts it on the hot bar you need to right click uh, sorry left click and were left click were but if you do it when you've opened the character screen it slots over excellent so we're now wearing clothes now telling us to gather some more wood don't do it by your hands grab your axe and start hitting it with the left mouse button i tend to take the full tree down but for this instance i'm not going to i'm just going to grab a, a little bit of wood we also need some stone as well because the axe is the only axe we've got and if we keep wandering around looking for these small stones well we're not going to get very far so but i'll see if i can grab a couple there we go we've got enough for another axe now Try and keep yourself with at least enough resources for one replacement of whatever tool you have or a repair kit. Because if you're left without it, it's a hell of a lot longer to try and get the resources back again. Craft wooden club. It's appeared because it's now a craft uh, quest item. Craft that. We've now got a melee weapon. It's now going to teach us how to do bow and arrows. Again, it's telling you to gather things, but it doesn't tell you where to gather them from. You see where the small stones are gathered from, and you can grab them as well from doing things like digging off the road, that'll give you stone, digging down low enough under the ground, digging rocks and stuff like that. You can pretty much work out where to get stone from. Same for plant fiber, we now know where to get that from, and from woodish trees and any like wooden items in the world or logs that are on the ground. But feathers, feathers come from finding these little things here, bird's nests. We get feathers 99.9% .9 of the time. You'll get feathers and eggs about 0.1% of the time. But you will get eggs. Keep hold of the eggs for now. Don't do anything with them. Just keep them. Have them ready for when you start doing some cooking. You can see now it's telling us we need to craft a primitive bone, bow and craft a stone arrow. Now what they have done is, is they changed it so that you'd only have to create one of each. What I recommend is actually creating as many stone arrows as you can. Because at the moment as you can see we are clear. We don't have anything around us but it's not going to take long until we do so i'm going ahead as you can see it's taking it away from us but it stayed here because it's a basic item it's just not at the top i'm going to go ahead and craft two more that's only three that isn't much that's absolutely nothing when it comes to killing zombies but it means if you place three hours into a zombie it means you only have to hit them a couple of times with a, with a club to kill them we're going to need wood frame blocks now this is the option where you can either complete your quest and move on or you can start building and when i say start building the reason why i say don't start building until now is because you've got a quest to complete you may as well do it as you go along we're going to craft one block and i'm going to show you what to do with it okay so we've got one block and it says place wooden frame that's what it's telling you too so you can just go ahead and place it but there's a couple of things you want to know if it's floating and it's not attached to the ground now this looks like it's attached to the ground unlike the um bedroll if i try placing it on top of the bedroll or top, on top of the grass there it's not going to hold it's going to drop to the ground so make sure it's on a level ground or something that's attached if you'd like a little bit more information on that at present there is a video out there about the um the effects of stuff like this but i will create another one in this guide later down the line for you just to show you like the integrity structural integrity of each of these items but right now there's one thing i want to point out on this if you look on the left hand side it's showing this circle square and triangle this means this block 
is alterable, that is a word, of other block shapes. So if we hold the R key, it now gives us several options. We've got the shape, which is what that image represents. We've got simple rotation, advanced rotation. We can rotate so it's on the face of something. So if you put it on the side of a wall, all it'll do is rotate sideways. Or we've got the copy rotation. These three here, when it comes to just a square block, are useless. They're pointless because it's a square block. It's the same shape every direction. What we want to look at right now is shape. Shape gives you all of these options. And it's the same for any item that has that little lock icon on it. You see it on railings or anything like that. That also means you've got other options for shapes. You can decide what you want to do with it. Right now we're going to keep it as a square. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create something around my bed just to keep it safe. I say when I'm going to create something, I'm going to just get something ready to go to create because obviously we've only got the one block. It's now telling us to upgrade. It doesn't tell you how to upgrade the one block. How you do that is with your axe, look at the frame and right click. And that's it, upgraded. The last task we've got to do now is gather five small stone to create ourselves a campfire. Now bear in mind we have this invisible square around us, so we don't want to wander off too far, but I can see some stone just ahead of me. These are nodes, and we'll discuss these at a later stage. But just bear in mind, these aren't for stone. They will give you a little bit sometimes, but that, that's for resources, and we'll discuss them when we need resources. Right now, we just need stone, so I'm just going to go ahead and beat on this rock until we have enough to craft our campfire. We've actually got enough to craft two campfires now. You now head on back because we can see where our bedroll is on our compass. And I'm going to craft my campfire. We're going to go to the campfire itself and craft. How easy is that? You shift click it so it goes onto the block. And if you mouse wheel, you can go over all the items. These are also number coded as well. So 1 through to 0 will give you, obviously, all your items. There we go. You now get another little thing that says, go to your settlement, which is basically find your trader, and uh, welcome aboard. Excellent. That was a good one. Save that quest for now. It now appears, like I said to you before, it's now on our compass. It's also in the world. You can see it right there because that is now an active quest in the area where we need to go and find some something. This happens with any of the quests that you have where it's got an area, so just bear that in mind. Right now, we're not going to do the trader because we don't quite need the trader. We have nothing to trade. Uh, and I want to settle up an area that's going to be safe to use. This is the point where you decide what you want to do. If you want to go out and hunt and stuff like that, then you need to start finding yourself weaponry. What I do suggest is you give yourself somewhere safe because when nighttime comes, it's going to be much, much harder to keep yourself alive when you're a new player to this game. If you're seasoned, then you'll get used to how they operate at night and how to avoid them. I will go through how to avoid them at night. There is ways around doing it, um, but it takes a bit of practice. So I do suggest having somewhere safe so you can work at night. There are two very main important things to remember in this game. There are two factors that affect it massively. Sound and heat. Keep both of them reduced and you have less chance of bringing in the zombies. That's going to be it for this guide. We wanted to complete the quest that we've got at the beginning to get ourselves set up. Our next thing that we want to do is actually creating something, as I say, just to give ourselves a little bit of a safe location. And then we're going to start looking at doing things like how to gather more resources. Um, the nodes that I wanted to discuss with you that I just hit over there, that's the coal one. We'll discuss what they are and what they look like, and I'll try and find one for each one of them. And we'll go on from there. If there's anything at all you'd like to know in more detail, then let me know in the comment section and we'll cover that in the next couple of episodes coming along. I am going to cover absolutely everything in this game through this guide. So if there's something you desperately need to know or something you're struggling with right now, let me know. And if it works in with the guide, I will cover it sooner rather than later. Otherwise, I'm going to continue going down a kind of a organized path in my own head leading on to the seventh night and then from that and beyond that with upgraded bases. 
If you do want to talk about it a little bit more or discuss it in more detail or want to join us for the multiplayer server, then check out the description for the link to the Discord below. And we we'll should see you there, hopefully. But until next time, everybody, take care for now. I shall see you all in the next one. Bye-bye for now.